Now, I am going to discuss both the heating curve and the cooling curve. Now, we are going to uh, analyze these two that what is happening here and how to find out the heat energy in both the cases. We will take the example of ice and water. You know that if we have a piece of ice which is at minus 10 degrees Celsius. Now consider, let us see, let us consider that you have a piece of ice at minus 10 degrees Celsius. Here I am writing ice. Ice, there is ice at minus 10 degrees Celsius. Okay? We are starting from here. The heating curve is starting from here. Ice is at minus 10 degrees Celsius. Its temperature is increasing. So first of all, you will see that ice will not melt. Remember this, the ice will not melt unless its temperature comes to 0 degrees Celsius. Because the melting point of ice is 0 degrees Celsius. We are talking about pure water and pure ice. The pure ice is uh, made from pure water, obviously. We are providing heat to this uh, piece of ice. Say this is an ice cube or any piece of ice of any mass, of any given mass, okay? So we are providing heat to that piece of ice. This is along the y-axis we are taking temperature and along x-axis we are taking time. With the consumption of the time we will see that what changes are occurring over there. What is happening? First of all we are providing heat to, the, to that piece of ice so its temperature will increase. It will not start melting. First of all the ice which is at minus 10 degrees Celsius its temperature will gradually increase. So, say it is taking some time and its temperature increases and the graph will come like this. Clear? So, graph will come like this. This is the line. So, this is showing that temperature is also increasing and the time is also uh, passing. The time is also going on, temperature is also increasing. Here, when this, the temperature of ice is increasing from minus 10 degrees Celsius, to 0 degrees Celsius. To find out the heat during this process, which formula will be applied? Heat capacity. Specific heat capacity because we are talking about a specific mass of ice. That's why we will apply the formula for the specific heat capacity of ice. To find out the heat energy consumed here, we will use the specific heat of ice and that formula will be used. Now, when the whole of the ice has come to the temperature 0 degrees Celsius, at this point, it is still ice. It was ice at minus 10 and it is ice. Still, it is ice. Now, you can see that the state is not changed here. State is not changing. Only the temperature is increasing. Clear? So, now, from here, this is ice at 0 degree Celsius. Now, if you are providing further heat, so that heat will only change the state. Because this ice at 0 degree Celsius will change its state and the time will, go, will be consumed in changing this state. And here it will be water. It will become water. At this point, it will become water at 0 degree Celsius. Now here, this x-axis is telling you that the temperature is here at 0 degree Celsius. Now here, you can see that state is changing. Here it was ice, now it is water. So during this interval, the state is changing, temperature is not changing. So obviously, the solid ice is converting to liquid water. Okay? So it is fusion is taking place. So the formula for latent heat of fusion which is I am representing by LF. LF stands for latent heat of fusion. So this formula for latent heat of fusion of ice will be applied. Clear? Now, when this whole ice will be converting to water at 0 degree Celsius. Now here at this point the water is at 0 degree Celsius. Now again you are providing further heat that further heat will, what that heat will do at this point? It will increase the 
टेम्परेचर दैट हीट विल इंक्रीज द टेम्परेचर नॉट द स्टेट एंड से दिस टेम्परेचर लेट से इट इज हंड्रेड डिग्री सेल्सियस टिल हंड्रेड डिग्री सेल्सियस द स्टेट विल नॉट चेंज वी सी स्टेट इज नॉट चेंज changing only the temperature is changing now it is water at 100 degree celsius at this point it was water at 0 degree celsius but we provided heat to it and it has converted to water at 100 degree celsius clear so here which formula will be applied specific heat capacity of water. of water here the specific heat capacity of ice was used but here we are going to use the specific heat capacity of water here latent heat of fusion of ice will be used here we'll use the latent heat of fusion of ice for this section for this section we will use the value of specific latent heat of fusion of ice for this tilted line we'll use the specific heat capacity of ice okay here we are using the specific heat capacity of water because the temperature is increasing clear now if you are providing further heat now the water will start boiling at 100 degree celsius okay now it is again changing the state so while changing the state the temperature will not change so temperature will remain constant at 100 degree celsius and only the state will be changing so when the state will be changing so it was water at this point now it will become steam latent heat of vaporization which is represented by lv latent heat of vaporization okay so in this way you will have to understand that which formula we are going to apply at which stage you must be aware of this there's the stages which are involved and which formula and which specific value is going to be applied here like sometime you are applying the specific heat capacity of ice the value of specific latent heat of ice then specific uh, heat capacity of water and in the sa same way latent heat of vaporization of water in this way you will have to apply the values according to the given formula you have only two formulas basically whether it is specific heat capacity formula or latent heat of fusion formula it depends upon which state is going on so according to that state you will have to apply clear now here in case of the cooling curve the same thing is happening here in the cooling curve the temperature axis this is temperature which is taken in degree celsius we are dropping the temperature say we are having okay now further if you are uh, taking out heat from that water which is at 100 degree celsius its temperature will drop it temperature will drop and that water will come the water at 0 degree celsius in this case we will see the latent heat of vaporization lv will be involved in the first stage now here the specific heat capacity i am representing it with small c where i i have written the full form here i am representing with small c specific heat capacity okay now then again when the water has acquired the temperature 0 degree celsius the further temperature will drop or not at this point what will happen when the water has state will change when the water has uh, taken the temperature 0 degree celsius now first of all its state will change okay so state will change during the state change no change in temperature will occur so graph will be horizontal line and then when whole of the water is changed to ice ice at 100 at 0 degree celsius this is water at 0 degree celsius here it is ice at 0 degree celsius now if you have further extracting heat from it you are taking out heat from it so its temperature will drop further so this may come to ice at minus 10 degrees celsius now say 
this is ice at minus 10 degrees Celsius. So this is basically the cooling curve and this is the heating curve. <coughs> here latent heat of fusion will be applied and here specific heat capacity of ice or of water? Ice. It is ice at this point. So we will say that specific heat capacity of ice will be involved. Like here you can see that specific heat capacity of ice was involved here. Clear? Any question related to this? Now with the help of this you must be aware of if you have drawn the graphs then you must write down that in which state which formula will be applied. It is very important to understand. Okay, in which state which formula will be applied